A casual visitor to Tijuana would have little reason to stumble upon a place like Villa del Prado. You get to it by heading southeast of the city's urban core through miles of sparsely populated hills, junkyards, and humble ranches. When you get there, it looks like a small city filled with row upon row of identical one and two story units, 14,000 of them. In Mexico, some people call these types of homes pichoneras, or bird cages, because they're so small. Some are around 300 square feet. But people bought into the idea of having their own home, even if a tiny one, in a manicured neighborhood. Ruth Betancourt and her husband bought a house in Villa del Prado eight years ago. When we first got here, it was quiet, Betancourt says. There weren't many people. Most of the houses weren't yet occupied. It was a nice place. That's why we picked it, she says. At the time, those new, empty houses signaled hope. A fresh start in a brand new suburban neighborhood on the outskirts of a bustling metropolis. This type of planned housing development sprang up on the outskirts of Mexican cities starting in the 1990s. They're modeled on the American suburb. It's often built because of fear of crime. People want to get away from the city. They want to move somewhere where they feel safer. These suburbs were largely fueled by a government agency called Infonavit. Infonavit finances mortgages for Mexican workers. The agency sought to combat the shoddy building and erratic urban expansion that have plagued cities like Tijuana. Over the years, Villa del Prado filled up. Some residents opened restaurants, stores, and internet cafes on the ground floor of their homes. A street market sprung up. But recently, the neighborhood has begun to deteriorate. There are abandoned and vandalized homes on nearly every street. The cul-de-sac where Betancourt lives has four of them. Some have missing front doors and windows. One house is filled with trash. Another has its walls covered in graffiti. Betancourt says people get high in these abandoned houses. They sleep in them and keep tabs on the neighbors' comings and goings so they can break into their homes and rob them. The neighborhood built on a dream of safety is now crime-ridden. Here's what happened in Villa del Prado and other low-income suburbs. For one thing, like in the U.S., many people lost their jobs when the global economy tanked and could no longer pay their mortgages. But also, some developments were built in the middle of nowhere. And though builders and city planners hoped and expected the city to grow up around the neighborhoods, this often hasn't happened. Here's Professor Larry Herzog again. Other investors aren't coming in and building shopping centers. There are no clinics nearby, so people are very isolated. Ruth Betancourt says what drove her neighbors away was crime. She says armed robbers broke into a house across the street. The pregnant woman who lived there was so scared that she miscarried. After that, the family moved to a safer neighborhood, she says. Housing authorities are aware of all of these problems, and they admit they've made mistakes with the suburban model that they're now trying to correct. Alejandro Arregui represents Infonavit, the federal mortgage lender in Baja, California. He says his agency's new goal is quality of life for the homeowners it serves and quality surroundings. Arregui says the Mexican government is now focused on sustainable housing that's close to where people work and shop and recreate. In neighborhoods like Villa del Prado, Arregui's agency is working with private companies and foundations to fix up homes and resell them and to rehabilitate public spaces. One such firm, ProVive, has already restored and resold more than 600 homes throughout Tijuana. If the city wants to restore all of its abandoned homes, it's got about 49,400 more to go. Jill Replogle, KPBS News.